Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the KVM channel of Kuntermann and Drunk. My name is Hendrik and I will introduce the new KVM extender for DVI single link signals to you. Well, what's new about it next to beautiful technical features? Of course, the name. So let's start with this. As you might know, <clears throat> we had already two extender systems which do a similar job, the new one does now. We have the DVI Vision as we have it here on the board and the Fiber Vision. Now what DVI Vision do did was to deliver a DVI single link and some more computer signals over a CAT cable up to 140 meters and the Fiber Vision did the same job but it was using fiber strands. So to make it even more clear and more easy for you, we turn that name and now we have only DVI Vision. Uh, DVI Vision left, but we have two variants with it. We have DVI Vision CAT and we have DVI Vision Fiber. But it's not only changing the name, because we also have some new functionalities which came along with it and we will go for that later. Well, as you know, we always have some variants with our KVM extender product line because we have different signals like audio, RS-232, USB. So let's have a look for the syntax of the new system. I will take the DVI Vision CAT as an example. So let's start it up again. DVI Vision, the CAT variant, and then all those <clears throat> different signals follow. And the first of it is audio and RS-232. And that is a new standard. So whenever you order a DVI Vision CAT, you will get it along with audio and RS-232 because many people used it, so we included it into the standard. If you want USB transmission, we can add up a U for USB and that USB is integrated in the KVM cable in that single CAT cable. So it does not need a separate cable and that's also the reason why it does not come along with a full 480 Mbits of speed because, well, we need some space on the cable for all those video information. If you want that 480 Mbits, you should go for the U two variant, which will give you that. Well, then we have the CPU side for the module which is placed at the computer, which takes the computer signals, or we have on the other side, on the remote side, the console unit. This is the single channel version, so it's for only one video coming from the computer. If you want dual head or quad head, triple head, whatever, so if you have more videos coming from one computer, keep in mind that we have those MC versions like MC2 or MC4, which will be added up here at that position. So that's a full syntax. And now let's go for some interesting de details with the new DVI Vision CAT and fiber system. And here we are with the devices itself, DVI Vision CAT CON and DVI Vision CAT CPU. As you see, both of it come along with a network port, for example, for monitoring, for SNMP um, gets or for SNMP traps, and of course, for configuration purposes. We have that beautiful ident LED which can be switched on by the web interface and helps you to easily identify a device in a bigger shelf, in a rack or whatever. Um, at the DVI Vision CAT CON we have the USB devices. So we have two USB ports here that gives you the, the hint. It comes along with transparent USB and if it is well the full speed or the reduced speed one will be told to us from the back side. And as we see here from the back side, this is the CON unit and this is a CPU unit. You see I have a separate USB transmission cable here, so it is 480 Mbits, so full USB speed. Taking a look at the CON, we find the generic port up here. The generic port is used for all kind of USB HID devices, so it's transparent to the computer and I have 
ports for standard ports, emulated ports for keyboard and mouse down here. Well, both of the devices have redundant power supply, and you see here the redundant one is an external power supply, the main one is an internal power supply. We have that beautiful local console at the CPU device where a local operator can have access to the computer as well as a remote one at the con. And that port used to be only PS2 and now it's available in PS2 and in USB. Well, furthermore, the con as well as the CPU unit are ready to be used along with the matrix. So if you start with some extenders and later you want to build a bigger system, some switched or routed extender lines, simply install a digital matrix in the middle and it will work. So now let's see how it looks in a one-to-one -one live application. And here it is in action, the DVI Vision Cat. I have my CPU module over there and I have my console module over here and now let's take a little look at the operation and the configuration of the system. Well, to start with the operation, it's quite easy. I have my video, keyboard, mouse, audio, whatever delivered here and I can simply operate my computer with a keyboard or with a mouse. And in the meantime, while I'm operating, the other station is locked so it got the image but it ain't got keyboard mouse control. If I want to, well, extend that, that operation, I can black the remote station, the other station, and that's when I need to do a little configuration. So I go for the on-screen display by pressing Control num and, well, those of you who are working with DVI Vision and Fiber Vision might know that it was configured by the serial interface. So with the new DVI Vision CAT and Fiber system, we have on-screen display and furthermore web interface available. So I want to do something at the local console or I go for the local console setup and I want to switch off the other screen when I'm working here. So I turn it to video mode, switch off. I save it and I escape from the window by pressing escape. And you see, as soon as I did it, while I have an action here at my console, the other console is set to black. I move the mouse again and there you go the other station is set to black. As you notice, that doesn't take for such a long period. It's only one second because the timeout of the system is set to one second. If you want to have that for a longer period of time because some people do some thinking when they're working with a computer, um, you can enable the so-called exclusive mode. That can also be done by the keyboard by pressing Control and Print that exclusive mode gets enabled. You can see it here from the on-screen uh, display. It tells you exclusive, so you know you're in exclusive mode. And on the other station, I have that beautiful keyboard LED flash to display clearly that you have another system status. So that's pretty much all about the operation. So we have that first come, first serve. We have that first come, first serve together with black switching on the other screen. <clears throat> and we have that exclusive mode. Well, um, we have um, on-screen display available for the configuration, but as you remember what I told you before, or what I showed you before, the beautiful network interface at the front of the device, we're also connected to the network. So everything I can do here in my on-screen display, I could also do from very remote by network. And as I'm network connected, I have not only the configuration, but I have also monitoring. I have SNMP functionality available, and we'll take a look at that uh, in the next step. Now, after that short introduction to the on-screen display, let's have a look at the web interface and how the monitoring and the SNMP traps can be very easily enabled. I already opened the web interface, and as you see here from the name, we are on the web interface of the DVI Vision CAT ARU2 CPU side. I also have the console side available, um, but there's no need to log in right now. As you see, I have both devices available here, and I have the view to all my monitoring values. And as you see from the red entries, there's something wrong about the red power. And well, I know what's wrong because we didn't connect it. 
And that is also displayed to you by that message here at the bottom of the web interface. Now, if I want to get rid of that message because, well, uh, actually it's not connected, I go right clicking the device, go for configuration, and then a dialog opens up where I have the folder of monitoring. I go for that and here is my redundant power. And as I don't use it, I can disable that very easily because those are the enabled, so monitored values. And by simply switching it over to disabled and applying, okay, you see that value is no longer critical and also that red message here at the bottom line disappears. But, um, well, that is actively viewing the device. If you want to have that more convenient and be informed by the device itself, if there is a mistake, we have the SNMP traps. Configuration, and we go to the network section, and here you see different network services available with a DVI Vision Cat. I go for the SNMP trap and simply add a new trap by giving the IP of the server and all that stuff, which you might know. Okay, so, so far about those monitoring values and that SNMP traps, which are very easy to set up. And of course, all the configuration is also at your hands, a number of possibilities here in the web interface, which you might already have seen within the um, on-screen display. Well, so far with the web interface of the DVI Vision CAT ARU CPU.